Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and call this March 26, 2018 regular city commission meeting to order. Uh, we do have a couple of changes to the agenda before we approve it. Uh, first, there's a typo on under the consent agenda. The regular commission meeting minutes is March 12th, not March 26th. We can certainly correct that typo and approve it right now or we can pull it off the consent agenda and do it as a discussion item and correct it at that point if you guys feel passionately about it we also are going to add uh, doug jones's um, presentation for the uh, rural metropolitan transportation planning organization remember a few weeks back we had to vote on that um, position and we asked to uh, have him come over and talk to us a little bit about it and he's graciously agreed to do that so we were able to get him in. That'll be item F under the presentations. So with those two changes, do I have an approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Martin and a second from Commissioner Glanzer. I would like to make the apologies before uh, we vote on that uh, for Commissioner Coleman and Commissioner Farnsworth. We had uh, a long-term resident in the city of Newberry's husband pass away. Uh, they're both old family friends, so they're at the funeral service tonight. Um, they asked me to uh, relay their apologies for missing. No commissioner misses a commission meeting flippantly, uh, but this is a, an old family friend, and they felt they just needed to be there. So we certainly respect their wishes. With that being said, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'm sorry, I have a motion to have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, and we have Pastor Rocky from Destiny Community Church here to give us our invocation. Welcome, sir. And if you would, remain standing for the pledge after the invocation. Let us pray. Father, we come before you tonight with more than just ceremonial words to start a meeting. But, Lord, we actually acknowledge that without you we can do nothing. But with you all things are possible. Lord, we thank you for our community. We thank you for the friendships and the warmth that we have here. We thank you for economic growth, residential growth. Lord, we thank you that we now have a surplus, Lord, that we can be proud of, and we thank you for the decision-making processes that have led us to this point. Now, Lord, we just ask that you would anoint the minds of those that are making decisions tonight. Lord, help them as they help guide our community, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rocky. Okay, our first presentation is employee spotlight. Mr. New, are you leading that us through that? Yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are having uh, tonight is fire department night for the city commission meeting. Yeah, come on up, Nick. We're gonna have you get, get you on camera. Ben told you that we're gonna. You got to give a like a 20-minute bio. No, no I'm, ju I'm just didn't. kidding. I'll, I'll give a two-minute bio for you. How about Perfect. that? Uh, because it's fire department night here for this commission meeting agenda, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, we selected Nick to be um, our employee spotlight. He's been with the fire department as part time since 2015, and, and obtained a full-time position with us in August of 2015. I uh, raised in Port Orange, Florida, and did not attend Newberry High School. We won't hold it again. <laughs> um, he has, um, he interned with the fire department in his senior year, and that's what gave him his love for uh, fire rescue. And uh, I called it his calling and attended fire and EMT school uh, after graduation. So you're one of, you're EMT, not paramedic yet. Yes. So, okay, so he's, be, will be, paramedic soon Hopefully one soon. of these days all right um he's family man has married has a wife named taylor who works in gainesville and a seven month old son is that correct yes. still seven seven and months getting any sleep yet not much no <laughs> <laughs> Can't say do. and is a motorcycle enthusiast so if he's not working or spending time with his family he can be out found outside riding his motorcycle uh, do you ride gatorback uh no i do not we uh, think uh, sports bike so i don't do much on the Understood. So, anyway, just like to present Nick and thank you for your service to the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 
and I think we have our chief here to give us a fire department overview. We are very, very excited. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, ben Buckner, Fire Chief. This is going to be our annual overview uh, or update for fire department purposes. Um, we'll get started here. Okay, our demographics from uh, year to year, they, they have not changed in, in a number of years. We have one lieutenant on duty, one driver operator, an EMT, and a paramedic. Uh, our personnel qualifications for lieutenant and driver operator continue to exceed what Alachua County and the City of Gainesville require of their staff in those same positions. Um, we have, we also exceed the requirements for NFPA, which is the uh, governing board uh, that, that provides standards and, and recommendations for how we're supposed to do business. Um, since 2000, we've had the uh, exchange program with Alachua County Fire Rescue where every day they send us a firefighter paramedic and we send them a firefighter EMT. That program is still in place today as it has been since 2000. Uh, that allows us to provide initial response ALS. That doesn't allow, to, allow us to transport anybody to the hospital. Just allows us to have ALS on site way before the ambulance gets there. Um, the ISO rating, which we all know affects our insurance rate, our homeowner's insurance rate, is still a 3, 3X, which is down from where it was in 2013. In 2014, we dropped, came better. Remember, the smaller the number, the better your rate. We dropped from a 4 to a 3. Um, we're hoping to potentially drop again. We have an evaluation coming up this year, and I'll touch on that momentarily. Uh, but we're in the top, as of the 2014 data, data we're in the top 6% roughly of the country of all fire departments as far as ISO goes. That's incredible. Uh, and that's a, that's a tribute to a lot of folks, including the commission. You guys budgeted things that we needed to get us to that point. It's a tribute to the fire department staff that we have and the training that, that the city provides and that we get on our own. And it's also a tribute to the water department and the things that they've done. Uh, the new water tower helped tremendously. That's awesome. Can I get let Commissioner McGee jump in? Can here? you go back sure. to the the rating of three slash three X? What's the three X? The Is three like X. They 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 changed this in 2014. Uh, the three the first three was always one through ten. The second was just a whole number without the three X. They've got us doing algebra now, I think. So uh, the three X is basically a nine versus and a nine just to explain it to everybody at home that may not understand if the first three you see is if you're within a thousand feet of a municipal water supply and within five miles of the fire department that's driving miles too you're a three if you're outside of a thousand feet of a municipal water supply but within the five miles of the fire department you're a three x if you're outside that five miles like manager new is your your insurance rates a 10 it's a 10 basically because he's outside the five miles so and that's something that and i'll touch on that here briefly too that's something we have coming up with our iso evaluation that we're going to try and and really um, pick up some it's not slack but we're going to pick up hopefully some additional points this year uh, on an item called hot water certification if you guys recall when we purchased that tanker that was one of the things in upsizing that tanker the way we did. Um, but we, Chief, to your point about it, it's a tribute to everybody at the departments, uh, that, that's a point well taken because it really does cross departments. It and, absolutely. And it's, a it's also a tribute to your leadership to help and explain to us and educate us on how the utility department can help the fire department's rating and get everybody a lower insurance costs so we appreciate what you've done in helping us understand how these things are interconnected well, so thank I, you. And I appreciate that uh, vote of confidence mr. mayor it's something that is definitely a team effort it takes all of us uh, we to, to make that happen I mean if the water side is is lacking that affects what we can do and that affects the ISO rating so uh, it's a team effort on everybody's part including the, the Commission um, 
Okay, accomplishments, goals, and areas of focus. If you recall back in uh, beginning October 1, we put in a, in the but prior to October 1, during the budget cycle of last year, budget planning, we uh, are looking to hire on paramedics in the future. Uh, not that we're unhappy with the exchange program. We have a lot to a county, but, you know, we're, we're getting into a point where, um, you know, we, we need to kind of think about doing that kind of stuff ourselves. And, and by doing that, uh, we had a couple options and going down that road and that thought process, if you wait and hire people through attrition, it could be many, many years down the road. If we go ahead and invest in our employees like the Nick Darks and, and some other folks, get them trained as paramedics, then we can make it happen a lot quicker. This, this current budget cycle, FY18, the commission budgeted for one, to send one person to paramedic school. The uh, person that's currently going right now is Christy Langston. Um, so that's, you know, gonna, that's gonna be something that we're gonna be able to provide on our own sometime in my estimation, if we continue to get budgeting for it and we continue to budget one person a year minimum, um, somewhere in the five year range, we should be able to have enough paramedics that we can implement our own ALS. Um, and that's something I think a city of our size to be very, very proud of. Um, we talked about uh, the requirements we have of our staff versus some of our peers, the city of Gainesville and Lodgewood County Fire Rescue, especially in our driver and lieutenant positions. Uh, some of our firefighters and drivers have also continued to gain additional knowledge and training to where they can work out of class, which basically allows a firefighter potentially work as a driver, a driver potentially work as a lieutenant to cover vacation time, sick time. And one of the things that that has shown that it's doing for us, and it's very preliminary at this point, it's helping reduce overtime. And that was one of our goals of getting this in the collective bargaining agreement when we negotiated with the union last time, and also something that the city helps benefit through is by redu reduction of overtime. So it helps save us some funds that we can use in other areas like potentially sending another person to paramedic school, things of that nature. Um, so we're continuing that, that out of class um, program as well. And here's the big one, complete the fire station expansion in the ambulance bay. We're approximately 95, 90, between 95 and I'd say 98%. Uh, there's folks on site today doing some work. You can see in the two slides, you have uh, the top slide being about oh, a year ago and the bottom slide being last week so that's where we're at uh, it's still a work in progress but we're getting there uh, realize the placement of an ambulance within the corporate limits of the city of Newberry this is an item that's still in the Lodgeville County Fire Rescue their fire services master plan every time um, I get a chance I've been fire chief North cuts here about making sure hey we're getting close to being done with this station. We understand it's a budgetary item. We understand that there's more that goes into it and you build it, they're gonna come. But we're getting close to being able to provide the items that, that you need to put one over there. Um, our response times have not gone down. They have five CC trucks on the road that has not decreased our response times. Um, so the need is still there. When I say our response times, our response times for an ambulance to get to us has not gone down. Uh, we have an upcoming ISO evaluation. That's going to take place sometime this calendar year before the end of the summer. Uh, once that takes place, um, ISO comes in. It'll be sometime after the first of the year before we get our results from them. We are going to try and attain that hall water certification. That hall water certification is going to give, if you remember what I said earlier, if you're within 1,000 feet and five miles of a fire hydrant, your ISO rating is at three. If you're five miles outside, but five miles, within five miles, but outside of the 1,000 feet of a municipal water supply, you're the three X. Now, if we can get the ISO hall water certification, if you're within that five mile radius or five driving miles from the fire department, whether you're within a thousand feet or not of municipal water supply, you're going to be a three. So that potentially is going to take a lot of people that are nines and take them to a three. 
That'll be a huge savings for a lot of people. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see what happens. If Chief. we don't get it the first time, we can still <coughs> ask them to do it again. And uh, it's no cost to us to do that. So we're going to give it a shot. Will the, the renovations have any effect on the ISO evaluation? <laughs> Will it? Not on the ISO evaluation that, that I'm aware of. I mean, you have training, you have you What have did we always training. get dinged for, for not having appropriate male, female quarters? We had some of the, that was a different evaluation. That, that, was, that was actually ADA okay. and um, EEO. Okay folks that that dinged us on that they went around citywide and had some issues with some of the things so uh, but that won't affect the ISO all right our goal is as it always is continue uh, provide the highest level of service through professionalism efficiency and cost effectiveness being mindful of investment that the citizens have invested in your fire and EMS services and uh, that's real big to me uh, I think everybody that's here tonight, fire department wise, they can tell you I'm pretty tight when it comes to the dollar. And uh, I think that's the way we're supposed to do business. Not tight to the point where we, we go without things we need, but there's definitely, in my opinion, uh, a difference between a need and a want. And I try and make that very clear to everybody that, that works with us. Uh, there's a huge difference. And sometimes the wants can help with a need, uh, but the needs are what we take care of. All right, call data. Uh, Ryan, and, and this is, just so everybody knows, this is actually uh, fiscal year, not calendar year. Um, so this is October 1 of 16 through September 30th of 17. We ran a total of 933 calls. Uh, as you can see in line two, uh, 687 calls were EMS-based calls. I mean. 75% of our calls, not just Newberry, but anywhere you go, 75% of your calls are are, are EMS-based calls. Uh, for the most part, that seems to be the trend. Um, again, that's another reason why having that initial response ALS is extremely important. Uh, getting that ambulance out here at some point in the near future is extremely important. Um, once we continue to have these EMS-based calls, and as the population growth continues in Newberry, call load and population growth go hand in hand. I mean, it's, it's just a known fact. The more people you have, the more calls you're gonna run. Um, what that's gonna do is that's gonna limit some of the things that we're able to do until we get some you know, relief on the transport side. Uh, and we're hoping to get that soon. But as you can see, I mean, the, the years of 75% of your calls being fire-related calls are gone. Uh, that's through a lot of different reasons, but uh, one of them is fire prevention practices and codes and standards and things of that nature. Um, but that's our call response statistics for that fiscal year. Um, any questions? Commission? You guys are doing Thank a great you. job over there. Thank Appreciate you, Chief. It. Keep us all going straight. All right, the uh, National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation um, is put on by the Windland Foundation. Some of you may have seen uh, some, some talk about this on social media. Uh, you know, the city of Newberry recently has had uh, a few issues with the Alachua County Commission where we disagreed on implementation of policies. We disagreed how best to get, how to get the best bang for your dollar when it comes to environmental issues. And I, and I think we were unjustly labeled as being anti-environment in the city of Newberry. And that's, I think, unfair because the disagreement was never about uh, environmental issues. The disagreement was always just about how is the, what's the best approach we all care about the environment, especially in Newberry, where we are primarily agricultural. We live out in the country so that we can enjoy the environment. So the, I, I say that just to, to preface when the National Mayor's Challenge came across my desk, I thought this is a wonderful example of how we like to do things in the city of Newberry. We like to educate instead of regulate. We like to have fun. Uh, challenge each other, turn it into a competition to achieve the same goals that other 
boards simply try to pass regulations, laws, uh, restrictions to get to the same end that we're trying to get to. Basically, all we, we, what we all want is to preserve water for the future generations, to allow them to have the same uh, enjoyment of going canoeing and, and kayaking and swimming in the springs and that we enjoyed when we were growing up. So I accepted the challenge. I've, I've challenged the uh, uh, Mayor Harris uh, over in Archer. He's accepted the challenge. Um, and this is a, a nationwide competition to see which cities uh, can go online to mywaterpledge.com in the month of April and pledge to try to do their best to conserve water. Uh, there's no cost. This is a nonprofit. It takes about three minutes of your time to go online and do this. All through the month of April, we'll be um, putting this information out there, reminding people to go and do it. The Windland Foundation cuts uh, cities up into five categories, so we could, uh, uh, we'll be competing against cities that are relatively our size. Uh, and if we win, uh, one lucky resident will get about five thousand. Will get five thousand dollars worth of utility bills paid for. There's a whole host of other uh, prizes out there, and then uh, the five cities that win, they'll put all of our uh, names in a hat. They'll pick one of those cities, and if Newberry gets picked, then a charity uh, in Newberry will uh, receive a brand new 2018 uh, Toyota RAV4. So we, uh, uh, we have two 501c3 charities in the city of Newberry, uh, Tin Can and Main Street. Um, so the kids voted. I should have said the first thing that I always do when, uh, when I accept a challenge like this is I turn to my students. I say, how can you guys help? And we have an AP Human Geography, Advanced Placement Human Geography class at Newberry High School that has a unit on environmental issues. And these guys jumped all over it. I've got some, pe some kids, if you guys would come up to the podium at this point so they can see your face on that. Don't be shy. And these kids are amazing. They have put together videos. They've put together flyers. They've put together, uh, they created a logo that they're wearing on their shirts. It says, Their Future, the City of Newberry. Uh, and everything that you see, they created a social media campaign on Facebook. The page is called Newberry's Headquarters for Water Conservation. Uh, I don't do Twitter and Instagram and all the other ones, but they've got every format. They have it covered. Um, and so it's been amazing. The kid, I, I pitched both of the charities to the kids. The kids are pushing and asking you to vote for Tin Can when you take the pledge. But you, every resident gets to pick uh, whoever that they, whichever charity they want to. So in the month of April, April is Earth Month, I'll be asking everybody to go online and take the pledge to conserve water. And uh, tonight, thank you guys, I appreciate it. You've, you've been on the spot long enough. Tonight I'd like to read a, a resolution uh, from the city of Newberry into the record. Nothing is softer or more flexible than water yet nothing can resist it, Lao Tzu. Whereas water is a basic and essential need of every living creature, and whereas the city of Newberry continues to explore ways to manage residential and commercial consumption of water and power, and to inspire its residents to care for our natural resources, and whereas the seventh annual Na National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation, presented by the Windland Foundation and Toyota, with support from the United States Environmental Protection Agency, WaterSense, the Toro Company, National League of Cities, Conserva Irrigation and Earth Friendly Products, maker of Echoes, is a healthy nonprofit competition for cleaner communities and a water use and pollution reduction competition between our cities. And whereas with the encouragement of their mayors, residents may register their participation in their city's challenge online by making simple pledges to decrease their water use and reduce pollution for the period of one year. And whereas from April 1st, to April 30th, 2018, the city of Newberry wishes to inspire its residents and its neighboring communities to take the Winland Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation by making a series of online pledges at mywaterpledge.com to reduce their impact on the environment and to see immediate savings in their water, trash, and electricity bills. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Mayor Jordan Marlowe, do hereby proclaim that the city of Newberry agrees and supports the Winland Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation and the program is to be implemented from April 1st to April 30th, 2018, partnering with Newberry High School, Oakview Middle School, and Newberry Ed Elementary School to encourage Newberry residents to take the conservation challenge. 
and witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand this 29th day of March 2018. Jordan H. Marlowe and Judy S. Rice, our city clerk. Thank you. And I should also say that as part of our efforts, we are going to try to get a one of those water cooler water fountains for each of the three schools in Newberry. Uh, Oakview Middle School, Newberry Elementary School, and the high school, they've all agreed to take the pledge. They've all agreed to partner. That's why it was so important to, for Archer to take the challenge because about half of our student population is in the city of Archer. So we'll encourage all of the kids, and the kids will go home and encourage their parents to save a little bit of water, save a little bit on their water bill, save a little bit for the future. So if you want to help us out, all you have to do is in the month of April, go take the pledge. So when you've been seeing those Facebook posts, now you know all the information. If anybody has any questions for uh, myself or the, the kids in attendance, we'd be glad to answer those now. Commissioner Clancy. What's the criteria to win for them to win? It's the highest percentage of your population that go on and take the pledge. Mm -hmm. So if there's five people in your house, all five can go take mm -hmm. the pledge. It's not just the, the person whose utility bill. So it's based on your, uh, your address. So if, if kids are going to conserve, are going to pledge to wash their hands quicker, turn the water off while they're lathering up, take a little bit shorter shower, you know, fill up the washing machine all the way and the dishwasher all the way instead of running it half full, it'll help their parents' water bill. It'll help uh, water consumption. Do you have those tips listed? Somewhere? We'll, have, we have all, we'll put, be putting up a, a tip a day. Um, graphs, flyers, all kinds of things. We're releasing all kinds of information in the month of April to, to help. Thank you. Awesome question. Anybody else? Commissioner McGee. Now I know I know part of this is we we want people to conserve water, but just to be sure that everyone knows, this is a non-binding agreement this is a, just a pledge that you're a pledge okay. you're gonna think water. I, just don't, I don't want people to see <laughs> that and say well i'm yeah. not doing that because i'm not gonna have somebody knocking on my door saying hey why don't you why don't you plan. conserve so. absolutely absolutely good good question it's a friendly non-binding competition that just is saying i'm gonna think about my water usage over the next year you know i'm, I'm gonna uh you know as as water costs rise we're all are all beginning to think about water anyway this is a friendly way to come back and say let's let's see if we can do this in a in an American way in a competition that's what it's all about so let's let's get make sure we get out there and beat Archer this year because I you know I want to take Mayor Harris out for coffee and and console him over his loss <laughs> when Newberry wins <laughs> okay Mr. Manager uh, uh, Mr. Mayor I just wanted to point out that the um, water conservation and since I've been with the city of Newberry has always been taken very seriously in 2015 this board approved water conservation rates a rate structure that would um, would should was anticipated to produce water conservation um, so we put those in place in October 2015 and that first year after you do something like that the data tends to be skewed because people aren't used to the rate structure um, we just completed the first full year after people were used to the rate structure and our residential overall our residential consumption is down seven percent um, which I think is is, is simply amazing uh, but uh, probably a more astounding number to look at is is our overall irrigation consumption is down 27 percent um, since uh, the, that rate structure was put in place and I think that's hats off to the Commission for having the foresight and hats off to the community for recognizing the importance of water conservation and I, I think it's a feather in Newberry's cap and that's going to be the very first video uh, in the month of April <laughs> saying this is how we can go about making some progress some real progress to saving these rates so it, that is an amazing stat to 7% across the board and 27% in irrigation rate is is tremendous and it shows that once we start to think about it there's probably a lot of ways that we can go to help Commissioner and I, I think the one thing I'm I'm most proud about was we were we were faced with the county trying to put a an irrigation ordinance on us and they said that what they were worried about was that the other municipalities wouldn't wouldn't do anything if we gave them the opt-out they wouldn't do anything and I think we've shown that you know I mean 27 percent reduction in 
in in irrigation. That's 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 pretty amazing. Um, so I think you know I agree with the manager. You know this is a feather we can have in our cap, showing that you know like you were saying, regulations not always the answer to to solving these problems. And you know that's something. I mean that's that's awesome. That's something I'm really proud of that I was a part of. So. Educate the residents and empower them to make their own decisions with how they want to spend their money and how they want to go about it. Well, I hope I, we get everybody to go in April and take the pledge uh, and go Newberry. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. They came on their spring break night to come up here and talk to you guys about water conservation. <laughs> it's not a school night, but I'm going to let them go ahead and slip out the back while we transition to the next one. But you're always welcome to stay and learn about local government. It'll help in 12th grade U.S. government. No takers. <laughs> All right. We'll move on to our board of canvassers. Uh, and, Ms. Judy, will you take us through? We've got a lot of information there that you want to relate to, to the residents at home as well. So this would be an open to the public. People could come in here and watch. All of these meetings are open to the public. But it'd be a little bit easier for us to keep people quiet because the municipal building has an echo. Yes. And with all those people in there, it gets a little loud. We have found that since we've moved um, the election to the, uh, the, the municipal building, the precinct six, the, the municipal building, um, it works wonderfully. But at the very end, the poll workers I think it's a good idea. Uh, it, if it's a little crazy in there, and you've done, you've sat up there on that table before, and <laughs> even trying to talk across the table gets a little hard. Does the clerk have a head nod that that's. Do we need to vote on it? Do we need to vote on that, or is that just a? We're we're just it's just a organization procedural. Thank you. Is the word I was looking for. If we have any problems, we'll figure it out again next year. Yep. Um, my understanding is that we're going to have, um, when the mayor or the, or the chair pro tem is not available uh, to fulfill their duties, they can appoint another commissioner. And on Wednesday, April the 4th, the Alachua County Supervisor of Elections will be here to perform the logging and accuracy test. And um, also, uh, steal the vote tabulation equipment and transfer the custody of the equipment to the city clerk. Okay. Can I have a motion for Commissioner Glanzer and Commissioner McGee to stand in for the mayor and the mayor pro tem on the April 4th uh, accuracy test? I have a motion from Commissioner Martin. Second. Second from Commissioner Glanzer. Any comments are <laughs> <laughs> you better. <laughs> Any comments uh, from the public? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Motion passed unanimously.
meeting will go at least until uh, uh, if we finish before seven, which is doubtful. But we will have this uh, meeting open until after seven p.m. At that time, we will uh, check the utility box as well and make sure that there aren't any ballots outside. special meeting uh, to certify the ballot results and swearing in of elected officials. Now I have seven o'clock. We have met at six and I maybe even at six thirty. What is your what is your pleasure? Commission. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. I think that's why we said seven because it would keep it standardized across the board and it's difficult for Monty to make it back. Okay. It's we need to not to leave it. And then Thursday also meet again at 11.30 a.m. and that is to perform the post-election manual equipment audit of the voting system per Florida statute 101.591. So that has that has to be done within 72, 72 hours of the certifying of the ballots. Okay. And Commissioner Martin, were you able to make notes? So everybody's good for that one. Okay. So uh, I think that's, Did, that's where Madam Clerk, do you have the date? For the last time that people, the last date people can do mail in ballots, absentee ballots, can you take us through some? Of, I've been fielding a lot of those questions, so we'll. I'd, I'd be happy to. And I've been fielding them by sending them to you because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Wednesday, April the 4th is the deadline for, any, for our electors to uh, call or contact me um, to mail a, vote, a ballot. But you still, from uh, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., you can still come in and vote. But I just can't mail them out after Wednesday. And also Thursday, the 5th, is the first day that you can have someone else come in. You can designate someone to come in and pick up your uh, ballot for you. You must have um, the affidavit. has to be signed by the voter and it's this process I'd be happy to go through it with we'll continue to send people to you for that one <laughs> yes um, one thing I, I do want to um, stress here is as of 2014 uh, there, there was a change about uh, regarding accepting ballots on election day vote by mail ballots you can do so only if it's an emergency and there is a different affidavit for that and you're actually the elector will actually uh, write that emer whatever the issue is and um, so I I, um, I do want to caution that please try to get your ballots in before election day because it, it, it is a process okay so that would be, um, is that it Absentee all. ballots, mail ballots. Okay. Does the commission have any questions for the clerk? Does the public have any questions for the clerk? Okay. Thank you, Miss Judy. We appreciate the, the update. Okay. We do have um, uh, Commissioner Coleman is absent. He's attending the service. Commissioner uh, Farnsworth is also attending the service. And uh, candidate Mark Clark is attending the same service. So. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'd like to move there, Mr. Manager, I'd like to move those three presentations, their two minutes, to the April 9th meeting. We'll give them two minutes. They may come in um, later in the meeting. If they get before the meeting closes, we'll try to fit them in at that time. We've got two minutes set aside for the candidates to come up and introduce themselves, and we will begin with Group 1, which has incumbent Ricky Coleman, who will be speaking later, and uh, candidate Jessica Baker. So come on down, Ms. Baker. Introduce yourself again to us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Jessica Brzezinski Baker. I am running for the Group 1 seat. Um, 
I have been in Newberry for 11 years. We moved here in 2007, but my parents have lived here since 1998. Some of you are familiar with my father, Mo. Um, I work at the University of Florida. I work for the Center for Latin American Studies. I handle accounting. Um, I'm involved in grant management, budgets, and um, fiscal oversight. I also have my JD from the University of Florida, which I earned in 1999. Both of my children go to Newberry Elementary. I have a six and seven year old. They're both going to be Panthers from K through 12. That was a very large lure for us to come to Newberry. Um, as someone who went to two different high schools, um, I was a slicer at my first high school and a sponger at my second high school. So having them both be Panthers is kind of a nice thing. They're normal little mascot. <laughs> um, and uh, we had weird colors at both schools, so blue and gold is pretty nice. Um, I've been on the Planning and Zoning Commission since April 2017 here in the city of Newberry. And I've also been on the board of directors for 10CAN since uh, February 2017. Um, I have a strong belief in responsible spending. Um, I deal with international grants where I work, and you never know what they're going to hand you. So you have to be up on the regulations and what you can do within them, and sometimes you have to think out of the box, because when they're in the middle of the Amazon, you don't have a whole lot of choice. Um, I also believe in being a good steward for our funds, so I'm hoping that I can get your support on April 10th, and I uh, hope to see you at the polls. <coughs> Thank you. All right, and Ricky will be moved. So we'll move on to uh, group two. And first up is Walt Boyer. You always get to be first when your last name starts with a B, right? Uh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> you also want to listen to everybody else first. <laughs> um, I'm Walt Boyer. I'm running for group two. And um, Lived in Newberry for, for eight years, lived over in Country Way for the past four. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with our commissioners over these four years on key issues as they per pertain to our citizens on behalf of our citizens, um, trying to make sure our taxes are kept down, are spent wisely, and, and such like that. Um, I've also worked on behalf of our citizens at the county commission level, and um, I do that respectfully when I'm in front of them. <laughs> um, but it's, it's always about um, being fiscally responsible, um, making sure that everybody who is handling our money and spending our tax dollars are accountable for, for those actions. Um, I bring with me, uh, I, in my political life, um, working on behalf of our, our citizens, I've made relationships with all of our uh, municipal elected leaders as well as our state and um, federal elected leaders. So I have those relationships that I'm able to bring with me um, if I can get the support of the city behind me and get their vote on April 10th. So we would have that as a, a positive benefit um, to help Newberry. That I just ask for your support and ask for your vote on April 10th. All right, thank you. All right, Mark Clark is also at the service tonight. We'll move him. He's a, is a Group Two candidate, so that will bring Matt Hersom. Sorry, Dr. Matt Hersom to the table. Good evening, Commission. Uh, my name is Matt Hersom. I'm running for the Group Two uh, seat on the City Commission. My family and I have called Newberry home for 14 years. I'm a professor at the University of Florida in IFAS, the Department of Animal Sciences, where I work with beef cattle, nutrition and management. Uh, my wife of 21 years, Chris, is the school nurse at the high school. Um, my oldest son, Cole, graduated from NHS last year and is currently a freshman at the University of Florida. My son, Sam, is a sophomore at the high school, and my daughter, Caitlin, is a fourth grader at NES. We attend Destiny Community Church, and for four years, my family organized the Sam Strong 5K uh, event uh, to raise money for Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy Research. 
I've served on the Planning and Zoning Board and the Historical Architecture Review Board uh, for two terms and currently serve as chair for both of those boards. This experience has given me a good appreciation for Newberry's growth and the experience uh, dealing with city government in that capacity. I have a vision for Newberry uh, that includes expanding commercial and business opportunities to support our growing population and provide business amenities for our residents without having to go to Jane Jonesville or Gainesville. But we still need to maintain our small town feel that we all value. That balance of growth can be accomplished in the near term. Agriculture has been important to Newberry and I have roots in a career in agriculture that can be beneficial to Newberry as the city works to initiate an agritech venture, commercial venture with the University of Florida as a partnership. That's a long-term effort, but it will put Newberry in an important economic uh, position. I have the skills and ability to make a good commissioner. I can make honest and impartial decisions, not clouded by emotion. I can speak on behalf of Newberry before the Board of County Commissioners without ha them having preconceived opinions about me. Newberry is changing and growing, and I believe I could represent all of our population with my vision and skills. So on April 10th, I would ask for your support and your vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, and that takes us to group three. Of course, Commissioner Farnsworth is at the service. He's up for this group, and we'll bring candidate David Wallace to the podium, please. Good evening, Commissioner, um, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner. I'm David Wallace, candidate for Group 3. Group 3, that's the group nobody seems to be talking about. No high profile endorsements, no Facebook vilifying, but I assure you, Monty and I are both running for Group 3. I'm running because I love my town. I'm running because I've always served Newberry in one capacity or another since graduating high school in 1984. Be it coaching youth for 20 years, working for the city for 27 years, or starting and running the RC park for the past five years. I'm running because I've watched as we've had commissioners have to face tough decisions, figure out ways to rebuild and balance budgets, make difficult votes when it's wants versus needs. I'm running because I want to be a part of that process. I'm running because I believe in traditional values and I understand how Newberry is changing. I'm running because I want to help guide through those changes and still hold true to the core values that Newberry has taught me. Mostly I'm running because I want to be a commissioner people can come to and know that it, they're being heard. Know that even when I don't have the answer today, I'm going to get on it and have something for them soon. I won't be a phone-in vote commissioner. I'll agonize and analyze over every decision, and I'll vote what's in the best interest of the city and the citizens, regardless of what my personal beliefs might be. I hope to earn your vote on April 10th, and I'm confident that I will earn your trust as years go forward. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck to all the candidates and the incumbents. It's uh, quite a thing. You guys know it to put yourself out there like that. So we wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> and Commissioner Glanzer. There are going to be debates. I was going to bring that up during the comments, but while we have a packed house, why don't we do it? If I have my notes here, April 3rd is, is that April 3rd? April 3rd is Group 1, uh, candidate Baker and incumbent uh, Ricky Coleman. April 5th is Commissioner Group 2. That's Walt Boyer, Mark Clark, and Matt Hersom. That's the Thursday of the week before. And April 6th is Commission Group 3. That's the race no one seems to be talking about. Uh, Monty Farnsworth and Dave Wallace, although I think that might have just flipped the tables there. I think everyone's going to be talking about it now. Uh, so that's uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday night. Uh, we appreciate staff coming in on a Friday. Uh, it's hard to get in three races, three debates. Uh, those will be the citizens' opportunity to see the candidates uh, sort of separated into the commissioner groups. We have a meet and greet tomorrow at uh, Glanza Realty, which is right across the street here from 5 to 7. It'll be the third or fourth meet and greet opportunity, and then we'll have our very last meet and greet opportunity the following Tuesday at Woodyard Grill. So uh, all of the candidates, I'm very proud of them. They, uh, they've all showed up to every single meet and greet. They are putting themselves out there. They're there for you so that you have a one-stop shop. You can come and meet all of them. 
talk to all of them for an extended period of time. They're there for two hours, so it's your chance to kind of get into an in-depth conversation and get to know them. You can pick one or two at one meet and then go and talk to the other ones at another one. Commissioner Martin? We have a meet and greet on that uh, at Woodyard Grill and then debates that night. So that'll be it. Two of the candidates will have to leave. They'll eat their dinner early, right at 5. And they'll come right over here. The debate will start at 7. 7 to 4? This, the debates are at, at 7. That will give everybody standardized across the board. All the candidates have responded. Uh, these debates are hosted by the Student Government Association at Newberry High School. They're student-led. All of the candidates, I believe, have responded to their email, confirmed their acceptance. They've looked over the rules for each debate, uh, and they are in communication with the student body president over there about how those will unfold. So those have been, uh, some of you have lived through those, experienced those. They've been pretty good experiences, and, and you made it out the other side. So that's great. Okay. Any last questions about that from the commission? Okay, then we will move on to item F, our presentation from Mr. Doug Jones about the Rural Metropolitan Transportation Planning Organization. It's a mouthful. And he's here to tell us what it is. <laughs> uh, thank you for um, having me this evening. And I uh, want to start by uh, thanking the commission for uh, their confidence in me as the representative uh, and your uh, nomination for appointee. Um, uh, my name is Doug Jones. I uh, am a resident of the city of Archer, and um, uh, I got involved with the MTPO in 2014 by appointment through the uh, Latcho, League of, Latcho County League of Cities. Um, MPOs, what, why they exist. Um, uh, Congress determined that they, the organization needed to exist because uh, Prior to the organization exists, federal transportation dollars were being used in communities and not everybody in those communities felt that their voice was being heard in how those dollars were affecting their neighborhoods. Um, so the MPOs came into existence and specifically um, for areas of uh, population, census population of 50,000 or more. In our area, that's the Gainesville urbanized area. Um, in a nutshell, MPOs do three things. Um, it's ongoing open forum for discussing transportation issues, and um, uh, it's everything's on the table on, on these forums. It's uh, transit, roads, bikes, pedestrian movement, freight movement, safety, changes in technology. Um, hurricane evacuation, anything that has to do with regional transportation issues are on the table for discussion. This, the uh, second thing, long-range transportation planning. Um, there's 20 plus year uh, long-range transportation plans that are revisited every five years. Those, uh, the, those, the session for 2020, it's a two-year planning for the, for the 20, <laughs> It's a two-year planning cycle that produces the 20-year, what are we going to do down the road? What's the best crystal ball for, for what do we need transportation-wise, and will we have money for that? So it's, it's a crystal ball of prioritizing. The third thing is programming. That's a five-year plan that is updated every year, and it's the things that are actively being worked. Now, with Newberry, I believe you have an um, uh, ongoing, uh, well-established relationship with DOT. Um, and that, uh, you're in a good stead in, in that. Not a, all of the small municipalities have that regular com conversation. Um, when you have as many sinkholes as we do, it, it prompts that conversation, <laughs> those relationships building. <laughs> Um, the funds that are that are prioritized through through the through these areas, um, uh, there's a set of lists that are the long-range transportation list, the 20-year list, and then there's the five-year list that come out of that 20-year list. Every year, that five-year list is updated, and you see things that are on the 20-year list start percolating through through the top. Um, 
can you give us any hope on 337? Has it made it onto the 20-year list? Well, I think 337 is not in the – see, this is where, where the – It gets complicated. It's, it's not complicated because it's not under the jurisdiction of the Gainesville MPO, I believe. I believe that's entirely out in the county. And so that's where your relationship with the county and with the DOT is, is where you leverage that. The other part that we're not going to really get down in the weeds about today is, is some of the monies and where, where they come from. We have a, we have a state gas tax um, that is for local dollars. That's not what the MPO, the federal MPO has jurisdiction over, but that is part of our transportation planning and transportation funding that we all have access to. In addition to that baseline gas tax, the county of Alachua has elected to maximize the local option gas tax, which is 12 cents per gallon. Most of that in Alachua County goes towards the operation of our of RTS. It doesn't go towards, most of that does not go towards our, our, our roads. So uh, that's, um, in and of a nutshell, the, the, abil the ability of the MPO for the federal dollars, their real authority has to do with prioritizing the long range transportation plan and the, and the transportation improvement program. The, um, and it gets confusing, folks that have been on, on the board for, for years, um, or I, I've been up there now for going on four years and I see the same questions asked year after year after year. Um, not all of the MPOs around the state, uh, in fact, in fact, very few have uh, a rule advisor type um, uh, appointee. Um, it's the Gainesville MPO felt it was very important to have input from, from the rural municipalities. Um, what that means is really not defined. So <laughs> um, I, I believe the original intent was for the rural advisor to attend the meetings, have some interaction, but mainly come back and, um, to the uh, rural municipalities and provide uh, a report back on you know, what's going on at, at at the uh, at the Gainesville MPO in December, they um, it was there was a change administratively to how the um, rule advisor is appointed, and that's why the new information came out to every one of the commissions um, in an open and transparent method to to um, make the appointment or make the recommendation for the appointment. So that that's the extent of my presentation. I'm not sure if that. Uh, Met what any questions y'all had or gave us a better handle, okay, Commissioner Glanzer. So that rural advisor has no vote. It is a non-voting. It's ex officio. Commissioner Martin and then Commissioner Bee. How often do <coughs> you get together with them, Doug? And how often can we expect to see you back? Uh, so since the new process, that's part of um, uh, speaking with uh, Manager New. I thought this was an opportunity to kind of hone out a new method of uh, communication. My thought is uh, once a year in person would be would probably be appropriate, but then every other month as the as the report as the meetings happen, that there should be some uh, written communication that, that you receive. Are those meetings monthly? Those are by they're, they're bi monthly. They're every, they're every other month. They're six six times a year. Commissioner McGee. First of all, thank you for uh, <laughs> doing this. Uh, I know it's got to be fun sitting and listening, and you don't really have a vote. Um, one question I had was the, uh, the the MPOs. How involved are they in this proposed uh, the proposed bypass, the the express? Uh, are you guys involved in that? Is that something that comes up? Or um, I, what I would suggest uh, the uh, FDOT did a. Uh, um, it was a transportation study on uh, uh, rail versus freight, and um, I would suggest that the entire MPO to a person was was um, adversarial on having extra freight or anything coming through Alachua County. Uh, on the other process that was going on, um, they've 
pretty much disengaged from that is my is, is my observation anyways okay and then the only other question I had was uh, I know a couple of years back when they tried to pass the the gas tax the, the half cent sales tax or the road tax I should say not gas tax um, are you guys involved in those conversations or is that is that those conversations are happening in the Alachua Commission and happening in the Gainesville Commission they make allusions to the conversations in the MTPO meetings but there's no real action and conversation associated with that I think it's possible that that's a opportunity to interject um, to both boards okay. and good luck I saw where you're running again for the, the yes Alachua I am Commission. Yeah, uh, elections April 10th. All right. Commissioner Glazer. Is the new bridge to High Springs Rail to Trail project under the purview of the It is not. Um, uh, I hope you're aware Archer is formally uh, uh, supported, um, taking a vote to support that a couple years ago as well. Any other questions? I look forward to those updates. You know, I, I know as a non voting member it can be frustrating sometimes so if there's ever anything that we can do to support better judgments when it comes to transportation we'll certainly help make phone calls and uh, well once again if support. there's any priorities that uh, you feel with it's the appropriate forum I'm more than willing to put anything out on uh, out on the uh, uh, table on behalf of the city of Newberry all right we appreciate it. thank you for coming and giving us that update and letting us know what you guys are working on over there thank you very much and good luck in over there in Archer okay we are two citizens announcements these are the two-minute non-controversial ones of uh, lost dogs garage sales here and not we will <laughs> Easter events Easter events come on down <laughs> I didn't come for that reason uh, but my staff would reprimand me if I did not share these events. Uh, it's a big weekend for a lot of our churches in the area. At Destiny Community Church, we are hosting a few events. Uh, we will begin Saturday morning with a free Easter extravaganza at the DCC property two and a half miles east of Newberry. Um, it's a free event. We'll have a petting zoo, uh, pony rides, carnival games, free snow cones, and free food and over 22,000 Easter eggs <laughs> estimated. We have not counted uh, them. Uh, how many of those is your wife uh, making for you? <laughs> <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> well, we've, we've accumulated a lot over the years, so um, yeah. But um, yeah, and they've been hand stuffed with candy, so wow. by DCC here. So okay. um, 11 a.m. It, it opens and noon is the actual egg hunt. And it is separated into appropriate age groups so that the little ones will not be ran over. Um, also, uh, on Easter Sunday morning, uh, April 1st, this coming Sunday, we have a 7 a.m. sunrise service, again, at the DCC property. Our administrative pastor, Andrew Petrush, will be preaching that service, and we'll have communion there. And then at the Oakview Middle School, we have our three morning worship services, 8, 9, 30, and 11, and everyone is invited. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, I thought you were coming for a citizen comment, Wally. All right. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Martin, a second from Commissioner McGee. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. We'll move on to our public hearings and ordinances. First item is A, legislative public hearing. Second, reading of ordinance 2018-01, an ordinance amending the city of Newberry land development regulations allowing for the construction of one accessory dwelling unit in agricultural and single family residential zoning districts. Brian, you want to take us through that before we read it in? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you stated, this is the uh, second reading for the accessory dwelling unit ordinance. Uh, there have been no changes since uh, the original uh, approval hearing on first reading. And without any additional questions, um, I, just as a quick overview, grab the right remote. Uh, again, there's only one accessory dwelling unit would be allowed per lot. Uh, all zoning districts that have residential uh, uh, allowances uh, can have them in some form or another. 
Uh, it can either be attached or detached to your uh, existing principal residence. Um, has to be in the same architectural style as the re principal residence so that uh, it doesn't stand out uh, as an obvious addition. Um, has parking has to be on the same lot and it also has to use the same driveway again so it doesn't overburden the, uh, the use of the single lot. Has to of course apply or uh, comply with all the uh, zoning uh, ordinances and standards uh, as far as setbacks and things. Um, it has owner occupancy is required and so there has to be a homestead exemption on the property. Uh, the owner doesn't have to necessarily live in the principal residence. They can live in the accessory dwelling unit if they choose and let someone else in the other family member live in the other. Um, it is limited in size uh, so that the accessory dwelling unit can't be more than 50% of the um, principal residence or uh, up to 1,000 square feet, whichever is greater. And it um, has to be sold as uh, part of the primary residence unless there's enough land there where you can legally subdivide the property. And finally, uh, the amendment we made, uh, made last time, which is that um, with the exception of a accessory dwelling unit that's attached to the principal residence and is designed with only one bedroom, uh, all other accessory dwelling units will have to have a separate meter for, for water and be charged separately for the water and wastewater and electric if served by city electric. All right. Scott, you want to go ahead and read that? Yes, ma Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to do so. This is ordinance. 2018-01, an ordinance of the City of Newberry, Florida, amending the text of the City of Newberry Land Development Regulations as amended to amend Section 4.2.4, entitled Accessory Uses and Structures, Section 4.4, entitled A, Agricultural, Section 4.5, entitled RSF, Residential, Single Family, Section 4.6 entitled RSF slash MH residential mixed single family mobile home. Section 4.7 entitled RMH residential mobile home. Section 4.18 entitled PRRD planned rural residential development. Section 4.19 entitled MU mixed use development. Section 4.2 entitled PRD Planned Residential Development. Section 4.21 entitled PD Planned Development. Repealing all ordinances in conflict and providing an effective date. The appropriate motion is to pass ordinance number 2018-01 as read by title only. Do I have that motion? have a motion from second. Commissioner McGee, a second from Commissioner Martin. Any other questions for Brian? Commissioner Glantz. I have one question. Can you explain the, the homestead exemption? So the primary residence has to be homesteaded, but in that mm -hmm. uh, auxiliary unit, uh, does it have to be related if they live there uh, to the primary resident? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, the primary, um, it has to be homesteaded, and so the owner has to live on the premises. Okay. However, um, it does not require that you're actually related to the person that's living in the accessory dwelling unit or vice versa. So there could be, I mean, the idea behind it is to provide um, quarters for family as needed, but there's no prohibition on using it as a rental okay. as well. Okay. All right. Good question. Thank you. Does the audience have any questions for staff on the motion on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Brian. All right, we'll move on to our first agenda item. Item A is Electric System Mutual Aid Agreement. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know that our elected body is all very familiar with uh, the concept of mutual aid, and that's where if we're in trouble, our brethren from around the state or the country come and help us and vice versa. Um, we, within the state of Florida, or, or I guess within the United States, all members of the American Public Power Association use a one-page agreement, which gives all the attorneys heartburn. How could they possibly reduce it to one page? But operators in the world love this, uh, a mutual aid agreement. And, um, and we are simply asking tonight for authorization to update our agreement. Dates back to 2000, and that gave at least one small city in 
north central Florida, a little bit of heartburn when we called upon them and said, well, Jesus, an 18-year-old agreement, how could it possibly be relevant? And uh, um, after I got past the point about the U.S. Constitution being more than 200 years old, um, we decided, why don't we just update it and make everybody happy? Um, so we're soliciting your um, authorization to um, enter into a mutual aid agreement. We'll transmit it to the FMEA. They make it av available nationally. Um, I mean, we're kind of small, so we might not be traveling, but it is uh, when the ice storms hit the state of New York a couple years back, all of Florida went to support them. When Irma, after we recovered from Irma, uh, much of Florida went to Puerto Rico um, they, they carried their lineman's trucks across on barges and they flew over and met them there and they worked for months in, in Puerto Rico restoring that. So this is the agreement that enables us to do it. But also mention that the National Rural Electric Cooperatives Association uses the exact same form. So we are under the impression that um, from as soon as this is executed, we will be confirming with both Clay Electric and Central Florida Electric that, that we have these mutual aid agreement forms in place and that if either party, last, last storm it was them needing our assistance, that we, are, we have everything we need in place and that it is simply give us a phone call and we'll mobilize and make it all happen or vice versa. Uh, so uh, that's kind of in a nutshell what, what this agenda item is for and I'm available for questions if you have any. Mike, can you uh, just make sure you let us know when we have that confirmation? Because I know Absolutely. that's something everybody up here wants to make sure long yes. before we get back into hurricane season, this is completed. That, that is correct. That was a big takeaway from Hurricane Irma uh, on the my to-do list was to make sure we didn't go through another storm season without that. Thank you. Do you have any questions for staff on this? Yeah. I noticed the same thing. I was like, wow. Yeah. Well, good job, staff, to make to pushing this and making sure that that does not fall through the cracks because that was an unfortunate situation in Hurricane Irma, and it shouldn't have happened then, and we certainly want to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. Uh, that's a non-action item. It's an update. I, no, I, I request authorization. You want to Do I have a motion from Commissioner Martin? Second from Commissioner McGehee. Is there any uh, questions from the audience, the staff, on mutual aid agreements? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Rural transit service opportunity. Oh, we love to talk about RTS yes, in the sir. city of Newberry. It's just a night for weighty issues for the commission. <laughs> um, so um, last week received notice from Alachua County from their transportation folks, Jeff Hayes, who we worked a lot with on the local option fuel tax. And he said, hey, Mike, and he asked Alachua and, and maybe Hawthorne, he said that uh, RTS, Gainesville's RTS, has received a $140,000 grant uh, from the state of Florida for an express uh, rural transit service. And that, that money is intended to provide 50% of the funding required for such a service. Alachua County indicates that, um, that we'd have to find the 50% match to make something happen. Um, so their, their request was simple. It's not a commitment to sign up. It's a commitment to have continued discussion to see if there's any interest with an understanding that there's probably at least a financial requirement on our part when we go through next budget cycle. Uh, I'm guessing that the county would go in a piece and uh, um, since there's a 50% match left, maybe the county is going to go in 50% and they're going to ask us to go in 50% of the balance. So it'd be 25% by the county and maybe 25% by us for whatever the cost turns out to be. So uh, the request is simply to, um, do, would you like for staff to have some dialogue with the Lachua County, get more details and find out what our stake would be if we were interested in such a service? Before the commission enters into deliberations on that one, I just want you to, to know that in my time up here, we've had two transit systems uh, that were provided by other entities to test Newberry out. Uh, I think the average, we did one to Santa Fe for a, a, a one or two year period, and we did one when I first came on the dais to Gainesville. 
Uh, I think the average ridership to Santa Fe was two. Um, and the one that went to Gainesville, they stopped before the completion of the test run because the ridership was zero um, or was approaching zero. So, you know, this is, and, the, and that one, I remember I was fresh off the campaign trail and I had some people say, what Newberry needs is a bus to get me in to see my doctor. And I called those people and went to their house to tell them that that trial run was happening and that they needed to use it to give the data and still we had nobody use it. So just as a, as a short history of where we've done in the last seven years for rural transit, again, neither of those were asking this dais to pony up any of the monies for it. Um, so with that history, and if it happens to change your, <laughs> if we are considering um, entering into conversation, I might suggest that we table this for a full dais. But I can tell you where those guys will be on this issue most likely. But Commissioner Glanzer. I just had a quick question. Sure. Do you think the reason we had low ridership was because there was only one bus a day? Or, you know, I mean, how much can you accommodate people if you don't have a, a schedule throughout the day? It seems that would be a issue if we can't do that then I think it's kind of moot to even well the on it. the one that went to Gainesville did twice a week uh, and so the people said well I, you know it's never on the day I have a doctor's appointment so it didn't work out and uh, generally the art but the one that went to Santa Fe accepted that argument and ran on a regular schedule um, uh, I think it was five days a week I'm not five days a week under the premise that you have to you have to just go ahead and suck it up and do it for an extended period of time so that people can become used to it they know they can depend on it and then they have the option to make other choices in their life sell the car use the use the bus those kinds of things uh, and it was and it had an average ridership of two so I'm sure everybody has an idea about why it failed I, I, I would have probably the same kind of ideas it's just not it's very hard to you still have to get a ride to the bus stop out there so Commissioner McGee. I'm glad you you uh, said all that because that was that was going to be my question I knew that we had kind of experimented uh, at least a couple of times and I was just wondering what the data was on that uh, I one thing I, I know this is a grant and it's probably locked into RTS but one thing that I thought was unique that former mayor Braddy over in uh, in Gainesville did was they started a service for an uber service where they were using uber and they were they were I guess you could say subsidizing uber ridership uh, it was for seniors um, I don't know if that's something that this could be kind of morphed into um, because to me that's more of an on-demand service which I think would make a lot more sense especially in a rural setting because you're not ever going to get that ridership unless people you unless we just outlaw cars and say <coughs> nobody can have a car then yeah you'd have a you'd have a great bus service but um, I don't know I mean to me I think that would be something to at least you know ask the question and see if there if that money could be used for that I think I know the answer because it is a it is a federal grant and well I'll, I'll integrate that into my conversations with the Gainesville Commission during the, our loft conversations I made the point to um, a few of them that the uh, rural cities would be more on board with loft if uh, if Gainesville would help provide that service for us since Gainesville uses the uh, a bulk of that law local option fuel tax uh, a, bu a bulk of what they get for their RTS system uh, that if they were could at least say to Newberry and Archer and Hawthorne but we're going to use that money and we're going to put a line going to your um, you know and that conversation didn't didn't go very far but there might be a, an opportunity there to reopen so I'll, I'll pitch that idea because I think that would be much more effective here in Newberry. Most of the people who want bus systems in Newberry are homebound. They can't, it's just as hard for them to get from the house to the bus circle here as it would be to get, if they can get a ride there, they could get a ride into 
to Gainesville. So that's generally the sticking point. So the some sort of uh, you know Gainesville-led initiative for that would be awesome. Is that so? Are we telling staff that we're not particularly interested in carrying on this conversation? It would be more money for them to do it with other cities. Okay. Any comment, public comment on RTS? All right. That, that takes us to comments. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at the last meeting, I indicated that the City of Newberry had received an award, a safety award from Florida Municipal Electric Association um, just a short two weeks later. and, and I understand that we have received the Restoring Communities Award from the same entity, the Florida Municipal Electric Association. Uh, so we just continue, our electric department in, in, um, in particular continues to just rack up award uh, year after year. Uh, that award was um, in recognition of our rep preparation and response to Hurricane Irma. I think that our response was kind of limited because Irma mostly missed us, so it must have been that outstanding preparation that caught their eye uh, that, that uh, put us in, in, in the running for that award. I uh, just want to indicate to the commission and the community that we had a meeting uh, towards the end of last week with a potential business that's interested in moving to Newberry. Um, unfortunately, I can't go into any of the great details about it, uh, but hopefully it's going to be fruitful, keep you, keep you all posted on how that turns out. Um, I'll be out of town uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, I'll be out of the office. Um, somebody's going to be a grandpa. So, uh, so tomorrow morning, uh, I'll get to be a, a new granddad. So, uh, but I'll be available by cell phone if you need me, I think, most of the time, unless I'm right in the middle of, of uh, you get right in the, middle of uh, the scrubs <laughs> and all that. Um, but I'll be back in the office on Thursday. Uh, a reminder for, uh, this is more for candidates than elected officials, or currently sitting elected officials, but we wouldn't discourage any currently sitting elected officials from sitting through that thrilling three hour uh, new commissioner orientation. If you've never seen it, the, these two have, our mayor has and, and, and uh, um, Commissioner Glanzer has, it's, it's, it's outstanding. I mean, it is edge of your seat kind of stuff. Uh, but for our um, our newer our new uh, elected officials, if if you have the opportunity uh, to to get elected, we're having that on Tuesday, April 17th, from six to nine. I think it's a one-year-old tradition that the city attorney's office provides pizza. So um, so and the city provides the best-tasting drinking water in North Central Florida. Uh, so it's a must must see event. Also, uh, it was so such a good affair last year that we decided to break it into two. We broke out the ethics, public records, and sunshine training for elected officials to a workshop on the following Monday night. So Monday, April the 23rd at 6 p.m. is a workshop to be held right before the, um, the city commission meeting at 7. That is not solely for new commissioners or new elected officials. That's a refresher for all elected officials. So we hope we'll see you there. I don't think we're going to do it pizza that night. Does, does not count as for as ethics training that I'm aware of. Um, and also I'd like to mention that we have advanced emo, which is the, I, I got scolded for not saying what emo means last meeting. Emo is the Institute for Electric Municipal Officials. And I couldn't think of that on the fly last time, so I just said nothing. Um, but we have, uh, we have funding available for any of our current elected officials to attend, to attend advanced EMO, and I encourage you all to do so. Uh, if you're interested, please let uh, me or Amy know or Judy know. And we'll, uh, it's coming towards the end of April. I don't know the exact date. It's over a weekend typically. Um, we'll get you set up for that. And for newly elected officials that will have basic emo. Um, they, they have one in July and they'll have one in October and we always fund for that so that's a, again a Friday, a stimulating Friday and Saturday's worth of training uh, but it, and it is well worth it. Teach you all the pitfalls that you can run into and how, and how it all works and um, so very good training opportunity for you. Uh, we received uh, a notice today, I received it today 
of an intent to file claim against the city by Capital City Bank's attorney. Uh, so it's kind of a second. And this is just a notice of intent. Doesn't mean they've actually filed a claim or suit. Has to do with, with our em engagement in the first suit that we have against. So um, if you have any details, I recommend that you, you just get with me or the city attorney on, on, offline. I wanted to kind of let you know, and we will be happy to answer your questions individually. But also, just as a point of reference, I'd say that the city attorney and, and Courtney are much more versed in what it means. I'm happy to try to speculate with you, but they're the real experts on what that, what that notice meant today. And last item, um, this is a very under the radar event, and I wanted to make sure I got it on the forefront of everybody. On April the 15th, which is a Sunday afternoon, the city is hosting a, a music festival. It's called West Fest. And we have this commission authorize us to bring in a very talented headliner from, from Nashville. His name is Mo Pitney. He's got a few hits out there on the radio. And then the undercard is eight very talented local acts. It's going to be it's a completely free event. There's going to be food trucks. Somebody told me there's going to be a mechanical bull out there. Um, so, um, you know how the Watermelon Festival, we let elected officials get in the Duncan booth to see who goes first. Um, uh, well, for West Fest, we're going to let elected officials get on the bull, and staff gets to run it. So I promise <laughs> all staff that, hey, when they get up, everybody gets a turn. So, um, no, but it's going to be a really, really fun event. We, I'm, I'm requesting that everybody in Newberry find that event on the city's Facebook uh, share it, invite their friends. Um, beautiful weather, I'm told. We're already reaching out with the weatherman. Uh, it's going to be just a, a really fun afternoon, and, and hope you all will attend. That concludes my announcements, Mr. Mayor. I hereby challenge all sitting commissioners to a bull ride at West Fest. Staff and commission, <laughs> staff and commission <laughs> tournaments. Yes, I'm ready. No, that's uh, yeah, under the radar. I've seen that. Uh, we're doing a good job. I see the flyer in the hands right there. It's going to be great. It's going to be a wonderful day. We appreciate all the work that staff has done on that to bring that. I, I think that uh, pretty soon we're going to be uh, we're going to be known for West Fest. It'll be a a branding opportunity. So thank you, uh, City Attorney. Nothing, Mr. Mayor, other than a welcome back, <laughs> Courtney from. Vienna, Austria. That's right. Yes. I asked her how Austria was, and she showed me pictures of Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> she fell in love with Wiener Schnitzel over there, and and I could see it's why. It's easy to actually. do. Yeah, yeah it's easy to why. do. But welcome back. <laughs> well, we add to that. We're glad you made it back safe and sound. So, Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, I would just like to invite our municipal le uh, electors uh, to contact the city clerk's office if you have any questions pertaining to the election and please follow us on our uh, website under the city clerk elections link uh, the, uh, the announcements to our meetings and uh, other events will be posted there for you. thank you mm -hmm. thank you ma'am commissioner mcgee commissioner martin uh, i just wanted to reiterate how many things are going on around Newberry. It's obviously very important for everybody to uh, stay plugged in. I hope everybody that needed took advantage of our citywide cleanup uh, that concluded uh, this week. But uh, anytime you have questions about that kind of stuff, certainly get in touch with <laughs> any of us or uh, the city staff. Uh, obviously, this is a big week uh, as far as Holy Week. And there are many churches in our community that uh, serve all sorts of needs for anybody who is interested. So please take advantage of that. There's lots and lots of things going on, particularly this upcoming Sunday, or this Saturday and Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mark. Commissioner Glanzer. Thank you. Um, the longer I sit up here, the more I'm just amazed and proud of the city. Uh, tonight, hearing that we're, our fire fight, our fire department is in the top 6% of the country is, is pretty amazing. And I think you know that's something that we need to congratulate uh, them on. Um, and congratulations, Mike New, on your new grandchild. That's wonderful. And uh, I might add one more thing on the uh, Easter weekend. On Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Methodist Church's, their Easter egg hunt. It'll be right before DCC so the kids can really get a lot of eggs. You know, they can go to both of them. My, my grandchild is planning to go to both of them, so I just want to tell you. And um, I will be on the bull. 
can. That's a fact. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Commissioner Glanzer. Uh, I, I would echo um, all of that. I think that there is a, a lot going on in the city of Newberry. Please uh, stay engaged, uh, stay with us. There's uh, a lot of good accomplishments to celebrate, uh, and we will work to get better every year and keep that role going. So um, I also want to just remind everybody the debates, uh, debates again are April 3rd, April 5th, April 6th. They go in group order, one, two, three. We reviewed that earlier in the night, but in case you just tuned in. Uh, the meet and greet uh, is at Glanzer Realty tomorrow from 5 to 7. All the candidates, as far as I know, have uh, confirmed they'll be there. Uh, so take that advantage of your ability to uh, hem them up and talk to them for a good long time. Get in depth with them. Uh, lots of food will be there. It'll be a good time right here on, the, on Newberry Road. Uh, the Newberry High School Golf Program is hosting their fourth annual Panther Open on April 14th. So uh, I have a couple of holes left to be sponsored. This golf program has brought home six district championships in the past four years. So it's all because of the support of this community, uh, getting out and, and giving kids who don't fit in other sports uh, their niche. And they have brought home the trophies uh, to show their appreciation to everything that you guys do. So uh, with that being said, I think, I think I'm missing something. But I didn't write it down, so that's my fault. So I'll open it up for public comment. Hearing none, adjourned. <laughs>